Eyelash extensions and false eyelashes have been popular for years. So what should we know about them from an eye care perspective? In this episode of Occu Talk, Dr. Janice Luke will be discussing all things eyelashes and eyelash enhancers, including why we have them, the importance of cleaning them, and things to look out for when considering making a change to your lash routine. Dr. Luke? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Janice Luke. Dr. Luke, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me. Well, it's uh, great to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to visit with us, Dr. Luke. Uh, so before we uh, get started, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience, let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Of course. So my name is Janice and I'm an optometrist and I currently practice actually on Vancouver Island and Vancouver. I graduated from the University of Waterloo in Ontario and I practiced in Ontario for about five years before I made the move out west a year ago. Um, I love primary care, but I have a special interest in dry eye and dry eye and cosmetics. Um, I find dry eye patients need a lot of hand holding and it's so rewarding when we find a therapeutic or some type of treatment to help them relieve their symptoms. Well, excellent introduction, Dr. Luke. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so for our discussion, we were hoping that maybe you can talk to us a little bit about eyelashes and uh, kind of eyelash extensions and, and how they may impact our eyes. Um, so to begin with, uh, what, are, what, are the pur what is the purpose of the eyelashes? Okay, so I'm super excited about this topic. Um, I love seeing eyelash extensions in clinic because there's so much we can educate patients about. Um, to your question, the purpose of eyelashes. So it's the first line of defense for our eyeball. Um, their job is to keep anything out, like debris or dust or anything in the environment. If you've forgotten anything in your eye, you know how much it hurts. So <laughs> um, eyelashes are like the goalie to prevent anything from entering your eyeball. Um, one thing that patients don't necessarily know is that there is an ideal length for lashes or lashes in general. So it's one third of the width of your eyeball. And sometimes if you make your lashes too short or too long, it can cause symptoms of dryness just because you've altered that natural width. Ah, well, fantastic information there, Dr. Lou. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, you know that there are probably some different trends going on, like such as people who like to kind of cut their eyelashes. Uh, what would be the purpose of someone cu cutting their eyelashes? So there's a huge trend actually on TikTok and Instagram, which we've seen where patients are cutting their lashes. For one, I strongly discourage it because bringing anything close to your eye, like scissors or anything sharp, is a risk for a corneal abrasion. So that's a huge no-no. Um, the reason patients or people are doing this is because there's a myth that if you cut your lashes, your natural ones, that they will grow back thicker and longer. So this is actually a myth. So it's not true. Eyelashes go through their natural growth cycle. There's three phases, the antigen, catagen, and telogen phase. And it typically takes about four to 16 weeks. Everyone's different. And that's assuming that you haven't damaged your lash follicles or anything else going on. Um, so still don't cut your lashes. It's not going to do anything for you. Well, that definitely doesn't sound good. I, I definitely wouldn't want to do that either. I think I'd be the one getting it close to my eye and it's freaked me out. <laughs> anyway, uh, great information there, Dr. Luke. And, uh, you know, there's also like a, a big trend going on with like false eyelashes now. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about fi false eyelashes and how they uh, how they work exactly? Yeah, so false eyelashes are one of the beauty trends that are super popular. It's been popular for a while now, but there's two ways patients can do this. So one is through eyelash extensions, and that's where the patient goes to a lash artist and they glue individual fibers to the base of the eyelash. And this can take upwards to two hours and can cost about 200 bucks for the patient. And it gives the patient a more dramatic look to their eyes without them having to apply makeup on every day. Um, the other way is through something called the strip lash and patients can do this at home. So my example in this box here, something like this, and you just glue it on at home onto the lid margin and you can remove that every night with makeup remover. Um, both of these require glues, but with lash extensions, the ones with the lash artists, you do need to go to a more strong glue and that can sometimes be a bit harmful over the eyes. So still something to talk about that we'll definitely touch upon, I think. Well, definitely good information there, Dr. Luke. And so what are some things that people should be on the lookout for uh, when, they, when they're getting these false lashes? There are so many things to look out for, but a couple of things that come to my mind are allergic responses. So we talked about the glues that are used to put the lash extensions on the eye and they tend to be a little bit more strong. So they release something called formaldehyde most of the time. 
And this is a carcinogen, which can then cause a lot of allergic responses. So some females that come in after their lash extensions have very puffy eyes, or they just say their eyes feel super irritated. And part of that could be an allergic response to the glue. Number two, and a really big one is blepharitis. So this is where there's a significant amount of buildup on the lash follicles and the base of the lashes. Reason is because the um, people who have the lash extensions stop cleaning their lashes, which is another myth. And what ends up happening is that there's a buildup of bacteria, oils, and mites on the base of the lashes and we can usually see this under the microscope and it doesn't look so good and then after we have blepharitis it can cause things like styes or dry eye or just other not so great things that can happen to the eyes so paying attention and getting a good lash artist is also super important to make sure that you're going to someone who actually knows what they're doing well excellent information there dr luke and actually you just touched upon it in your answer about cleaning uh people not cleaning their false eyelashes how important is it for someone to clean their false eyelashes and how often should that be done? It is so, so, so important to clean your lash extensions and your lashes in general. So daily cleansing is super important, even if you do have lash extensions on. Um, if you ever look on my Instagram account, I have some nice videos of <laughs> under the microscope that we do see some buildup on patients' lash extensions specifically, and it can get pretty, not so pretty. <laughs> um, that's a myth that a lot of, I guess, patients have about cleaning their lash extensions is that they'll make them fall off. And that is a myth because if you have a clean lash base and a clean lid margin, it actually promotes your lashes naturally to stay on longer. So it's actually beneficial for you to be cleaning your lashes rather than not cleaning them. Oh, well, fantastic information there. Definitely eyelid hygiene is very important. And um, are there any products or ingredients that people should avoid near the eyes when they have uh, false eyelashes? In general, one thing I have noticed in practice is that even when patients get these lash extensions in hopes to, I guess, create a more dramatic look, they still apply makeup over top. And so what I do not recommend is waterproof makeup or glittery makeup because it gets much more difficult to remove this over top the lash extensions and that promotes more blepharitis buildup. Um, to prevent lash extensions from falling off, avoid oil-based products like coconut oil or alcohols and that will promote the longevity of the lashes sticking on. But in general, not just for lash extensions, I generally recommend ingredients to avoid like baby shampoo. <laughs> There's a myth that that's in the past. We actually were taught that in school, that baby shampoo is good to, to clean the lashes with. Very not so good. <laughs> I recommend something like OcuSoft instead. And another thing is with lash serums, this is a whole new topic and a whole can of worms I could open, but one ingredient to avoid is prostaglandin analogs, and that's found in quite a lot of lash serums actually. And even when patients are doing lash extensions, I find they are still using lash serums. So just find one that doesn't contain a prostaglandin analog. So more of a peptide-based lash serum. Well, we definitely appreciate the shout out there, Dr. Luke. Thank you so much. And uh, what are like some measures people can take to avoid eye care issues and like still have their false eyelashes? For sure. So for one, which we've touched upon many times, cleaning your eyelashes every day with an antimicrobial cleanser, super important. Um, I recommend females or males in general take breaks between their fills. So what that means is they tend to, patients tend to go through repeating and filling their lashes to save money. Um, if you take breaks when your eyes are feeling uncomfortable, it might actually be healthier for the ocular surface. Uh, another tip is getting a less dramatic fill. So instead of getting something that's super thick or super long, go for a more natural look, and that can help just with the heaviness on your lashes. Um, avoid makeup over top your lash extensions and do your research with your lash artists. And lastly, obviously, seeing your optometrist if you are noticing anything's going on with your eyes. Oh, fantastic. And actually, you just pointed them on it, uh, seeing your optometrist whenever something is going on with your eyes. So when, when should somebody consult uh, their optometrist about what's going on with their makeup they're using or those false eyelashes? Uh, when should we see you? This should be any time. So it's really funny because when you talk to patients, they actually think it's normal for them to feel their eyes. I think there is so much poking and prodding that has to go on before they'll admit that something's actually uncomfortable with their ocular surface. But truthfully, you shouldn't be feeling your eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you are, you probably have some symptoms of dry eye and you should probably see an optometrist to give you some recommendations to help with that. Well, definitely fantastic advice, Dr. Luke. Thank you for that. And with, when it comes to false eyelashes or it, the, the eye care uh, horizon in general, are there any new technologies or developments that on the horizon that we should be on the lookout for? 
For sure. So from a therapeutic level right now, what I'm really excited for is there's a new eye drop that's coming out for Demodex specifically. It's called a Lotalinar Ophthalmic Solution at 0.25%. So it's something called TPO3 and it works specifically to paralyze and kill Demodex mites. And this is something that's going to be a game changer because it's an eye drop that's used for six weeks twice a day. Um, it's coming down the grapevine. There are two studies, the Saturn 1 and Saturn 2, that are being, I guess, implemented right now in clinical trials. And once this comes out, I think we have a very huge option for patients in terms of eradicating the Demodex mites. From a beauty standpoint, um, right now, a little bit of a disclosure. So I am doing or working on something specifically for lash extensions and the cleanliness of them. So we have a lash cleanser that is coming out sometime in the future and your brand is called Ithos. So look up for that. But in the eye care space as well, there are so many good brands of eye care friendly makeup. So one is Eyes Are the Story or Try 2020 Beauty. So these are usually formulated by ophthalmologists and it is basically a more safe and friendly or eye friendly product that you can apply to your eyes instead of just an over the counter makeup. Um, lastly, I know there's a huge buzz for IPL and LLT or photobiomodulation, and these are two, I guess, in-office therapies that already exist and are being implemented for patients, but I think there's going to be a bigger and bigger uptake of it coming up for patients just because quite beneficial for um, controlling inflammation and so forth. Well, excellent information there, Dr. Luke. We appreciate that. And uh, before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? Yes. So one topic that is super near and dear to my heart, obviously, is cosmetics and dry eye and all the things that it can do to the ocular health. As an optometrist, I never tell patients what they should or shouldn't do just because that's not my job. I give you tools and educational advice just to empower you to make the right decisions. But two trends I am really, really passionate about that I always say you really need to do your research before going for. One is tattoo eyeliner. That one is a permanent <laughs> tattoo that's applied to the lid margin, and it can cause irreversible damage to your meibomian glands. So just do your research before you go for anything like that. Second one is blepharoplasty. So when patients have a bit of a droopier lid, they want to resect the lid a bit higher. Sometimes if you don't go to a good surgeon, what can happen is it can leave a huge gap and that can cause a lot of dryness. So the patient's eye can't fully close. So once again, just do your research and make sure you don't cause any permanent effects to your eyes. Um, one more thing that's super important to me that I think patients should all know about is reading ingredient labels on their cosmetics, as well as their eye creams or things like that. Um, we don't realize this, but a lot of stuff that we apply around our eyes can cause a lot of dry eye symptoms. And whenever I have this conversation with patients in clinic, they're almost shocked that this is something that's correlated. So it's like reading a, a food label. Um, we never really learned how to do it until, I guess, in the last 10, 20 years in school. But same idea, um, hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, ophthalmologist tested, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a safe product. So we can go into this in detail, but just learn how to read the cosmetic labels. Well, that's all definitely great advice, Dr. Luke, and we appreciate that very much. Everyone, that was Dr. Janice Luke. Dr. Luke, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nick and Akisat, for having me. Love your products so much.